everybody, Psych with Psych's Rec Fuel. Honestly, they should have just called this game M, the letter M, because this game is just so much like three other series put together. It's like equal parts Mad Max, which I know is a movie series, and they did come out with a video game after the release of this game, but the series itself has existed beforehand. Just the, the vehicle styles and the kind of environments are very similar. It's also parts Motorstorm uh, in the races themselves, as well as some of the vehicles are very similar. And honestly, something like Monster Truck Madness. Maybe more so Monster Truck Madness 2 from the the level exploration and climbing up mountains and stuff like that. So, as if fuel wasn't short enough, they should have just called it M. This being the third of the trifecta of Xbox 360 games with no DLC, the other two being Driver San Francisco and Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. But yeah, uh, a weird, interesting sort of game. Let's get into, like, here's, here's the main play field. And every area, it it's divvied up into 19 different sections, and every area kind of has similar things, so... Career stars, uh, there's career races in each area, which allow you to choose whatever vehicle you want to use within that category. So certain races will only allow you to use, you know, bikes, and some will only allow you to use muscle cars and things like that. And challenges are more or less the same. Every area has 10 challenges, and all the challenges are similar, similar types of challenges, but the vehicle is provided for you, so that's the one difference to that. Vista points are just kind of like beautiful scenic views around the area. And also, every time you collect a Vista point, it gives you another warp point. Vehicle libraries are just different libraries that you can unlock for that specific vehicle that are just scattered around the, the land. And once again, like Vista points give you a, a warp, a warp point. And then Doppler trucks, every time you complete a race, in the career, a truck will be released driving around, and if you track it down and tag it, then it'll do whatever it's specified to do. So there's three Doppler trucks. One will show where all the Vista points are in that particular area. One will show where all the liveries are in all that area, and then the third one will show where all the challenges are in that area. So they're very useful and definitely beneficial to to get those as soon as possible and then in terms of the vehicles themselves uh, there's a nice little mix there's I think six categories of vehicles there's bikes quads ATVs muscle cars SUVs trucks and buggies so again very motor stormy and don't worry if you've never heard of motor storm which I'm finding out a lot of people have not you'll you'll get a bit more experience later on just you wait but every vehicle has different stats in terms of like speed acceleration grip brake reliability is your strength basically how much damage your vehicle can sustain before it completely crashes out but every vehicle will have one or three combinations of asphalt and off-road stat like muscle cars most of them have high asphalt, low off-road, which means they do very well on roads, but they do very poorly on off-road, basically. Dirt and, and sand and all that sort of stuff. Then you have vehicles like this that have a mix of off-road and asphalt stat, which is pretty good. And then you have things like, like this that has a very high off-road stat and a very low asphalt stat, which really doesn't mean anything because they still work very well on paved surfaces. So, your benefit is always to go for a vehicle that has a higher off-road stat in any situation that allows you to choose your vehicle. So with that being said, the Enforcer, I want my name to be Spaghetti, dumb reference, but the wreck of this game, <sighs> kind of weak honestly, because as you can see, it's high asphalt, low off-road, which means that it's only useful on roads, so it's only useful on like... 5% of the game map <laughs> and it's got less than great speed less than great acceleration this is one of the earlier vehicles you unlock in the game 
So, it's to be expected, honestly. And you unlock it by... It, it has to do with how many stars you've collected in career. And then you unlock the ability to purchase this vehicle along with, like, 12 other ones. But, all in all, it's, it's very pretty. I mean, it's got the big the big wing on the back. It's got a spare tire and two nitrous tanks in the back. It's got an air scoop in it. These front bumper attachments. So, all in all, it's a spiffy little spiffy little thing. It's just unfortunate that it's only useful on 5% of the game. Now, if you've never heard of this game, it's understandable, but that's kind of interesting because this game is renowned for two reasons, or well-known for two reasons. The first reason being this game holds the world record, as far as I know, and it hasn't been usurped yet, but holds the world record for the largest in-game play area of any video game ever made. So, you see all of this right here? This is basically 14,000 square kilometers, which is 5,000 square miles or 8,000 square miles. It's one of the two. I just know that it's 14,000 square kilometers. To give you a retrospect, that's basically the size of the state of Connecticut. So that's huge and very ambitious upon Codemasters, the people that developed this game, which are also the people that developed Dirt Showdown, and I'm assuming the Dirt series in general, but I know of Dirt Showdown because, again, before Flat Out Ultimate Carnage, that was my favorite Demolition Derby game, and it's still my second favorite Demolition Derby game. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Bonus cars. Um, very similar to Doppler trucks, but instead of unlocking the ability to find Vista Points and Liveries, you just unlock a vehicle. So you win that particular race, the vehicle will be driving around the map, you tag it, and then you unlock that vehicle. So that's one thing I really like about it. And then, I'll just show this off real quick. These are some stacked fuel barrels, and fuel in this game is your currency. So I got 400 fuel, and I'll explain that in a second once I get uh, through my other points. The other point, aside from the fact that this game holds the world record for the largest in-game map, is this game is often referred as one of the top 10 worst open-world video games ever made. Both Watch Mojo and What Culture, which are two channels, I guess, that I frequently watch. I'm not subscribed to them, but every now and then they, they pique my interest. Both of them have made lists of top 10 worst open world games, and this game made it on both lists. So, that's something. Just because, again, you have this massive in-game play area, but it's kind of barren. Like, as you can see, this is pretty flat and dull and boring. And especially with the fact that I have a vehicle that has very low off-road stats, so it can only go, you know, so fast on dirt and sand and whatnot. <laughs> but believe it or not, this area, the sandy area, is some of the more interesting area of the game, because most of it's just like mountains with a lot of trees, a lot of trees and a lot of mountains, and it's very repetitive and dull and boring because there's a lot of it. So these big sandy areas are honestly the more interesting points. And there's like snow-capped mountains and beaches and lakes and things of that nature. Very rural, except for this area right here, which is called the Dust Bowl City. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, I did this. I did it the exact same thing again. I didn't mean to. My bad. So in case you're wondering, Yes, there's a plot, a story, a reason why everything looks like post-apocalypse and like everyone's dead. But before I get into all that, I just want to say this area, specifically Dust Bowl City, it reminds me very much of the game Darksiders because there's a ga there's an area in that game called the Ashlands, I believe. 
that looks very similar to this, so... This is one of my more preferred areas of the game, especially because, like I said before, this game is very rural in the sense that it's a lot of, you know, just off-road in between a lot of nothingness, and it honestly didn't feel like they were going to put any sort of city aspect into the game at all. There was one part in an area that you unlock fairly early in the game where you could see a city, but you couldn't get to it because it was off the grid, and it was like surrounded by a lake, or is flooded out, or something of that nature, but you couldn't get to it. And I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, technically there's a city, but you can't get to it. But then when I found out about this area, then that made me happy, because it's like an actual city that you can drive around in, which is really, really, really cool. Anyways. Um... You know what, I'll actually... Screech! I'll actually talk about the plot of the game while I go to a different area. My favorite slash least favorite area of choice. Let's see here. Look at this. Look at, look at how far you can zoom. This is as close as I can get. Look at how... Look at this distance. It's incredible. I'll go ahead and... Right there. Anyways, the plot of the game, basically, and you would only know this if you had the instruction manual, because it doesn't say anything about this in-game. And for the record, this game's rated E, so nobody dies. Just wanted to point that out. But anyways, the plot of the game is basically, this part of the country has basically caused a mini-apocalypse where it's kind of used up all of its resources, so in order to, you know, prevent extinction of the human race eventually, they started to go away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy and renewable resources. And once they figured out how to do that, since obviously this area of the world or of the country is basically ruined, God bless humanity, they abandoned it to move on to live in different areas. So they have no need a, for this area, and B, for fuel, petrol. But there are a bunch of people that, you know, are just your garden variety petrol heads that just love the concept of, you know, gas guzzling vehicles and all that sort of stuff. So they kind of come into this area that nobody, I mean, nobody else lives here, so might as well. And they're basically enjoying the last of the fossil fuel that's left because once all of this fuel is used up then that's it because there will be no need for any other fuel in the game or in in the game world if you will so this game's just kind of like a celebration of petrol fueled vehicles and and all that sort of stuff very motor stormy except motor storm doesn't take place in an apocalyptic type setting well one of them does but but again like I said this game is rated E so obviously nobody dies they just kinda you know realize that oh oh we're kinda destroying ourselves maybe we should stop using fuel like petrol and actually you know benefit humanity but you know what is a good goal to have perhaps that's something uh, people in the real world should take notice of also, I just drove through a large ship. Yeah, it's a giant uh, beached tanker. And this is one of the base camps of the game. So, it's my favorite and my least favorite because it it's terrifying. Like that one end right there, you can see is still kind of in the ocean. But then over here, you have the front end of... Oh, God. Oh, just just ships man just look at this Ugh. oh god I touched it I touched it oh ugh. get away get away from that oh now it's dark oh that's worse that's totally not great but anyways that's a, a pretty beautiful image right there <laughs> 
Uh, I'm trying to remember what I was... Oh, um, the fuel barrels that I hit. Fuel in this game is your currency. So, like, right there in the bottom right where it's a, the little flame icon, that's that's your currency. That's how much fuel you have. And you use fuel to buy things like uh, vehicles that you cannot unlock via tracking them down in the world map and whatnot. And then also you have... Uh, character you can change him up a little bit and change his helmet and his upper body apparel and his lower body apparel you can do stuff like that but yeah honestly that's that's kind of it let me just oh that's a good image let me see let me do a proper end point uh just, just all kinds of wrecked. Not, not like Sykes wreck, just wreck wreck. Eh. Kind of kafutzing around. I probably could have had this done by now. Ah, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just, I'll leave it off here. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time for the next Sykes wreck.